We also welcome on board Devin Choksi. Devin, hi, good morning. Let's discuss Reliance. Uh, the fact that uh, I don't know after how many years it's a first that they're declaring their numbers on Monday and very wisely coinciding with Elon Musk's visit as well. Seems like some announcement could well be in the offing. What are you anticipating from the earnings though? Good morning, Aisha. Uh, well, I think this quarter earnings, uh, probably a few things one will have to look at. The consumer facing businesses, the geo and the retail, they have actually on a month on month basis reported significantly uh, better rumors as far as I think their uh, respective areas of activity is concerned. In case of uh, geo platforms, uh, you already have the rollout of uh, geo fiber for, for home as well as for enterprise. And those numbers are expected to have some kind of protection into the books of the company. At the same time, more than 45 crores uh, uh, mobile subscribers consuming higher number of minutes is giving a better amount of uh, level on the on the numbers. As I see it, I think the company has already established one like 20,000 crore worth of uh, revenue book and around 60,000 crore worth of EBITDA book uh, on a yearly basis, which is growing at 20% rate of growth which is likely to continue for new uh, financial year, that is 24, 25 as well. So that is one key thing that we'll be watching out for. In case of retail business too, I think 19% kind of a growth or 20% kind of a growth is being seen. And most importantly, the contribution to the margin is coming largely from the, uh, the, the own brands, which are basically contributing significantly, particularly into physical stores. So both these areas, uh, the geo platform as well as geo uh, reliance retail, both these areas probably suggest that uh, consumer facing businesses are going to have a robust quarter. On the other side, uh, the oil and gas business, uh, the refining business, specialty chemical business, they continue to have higher amount of traction, largely because of the growth in the economy at the same time. And they've been successful in meeting uh, the better amount of numbers on operating side, which we believe I think should get validated with the results coming out. So this industrial uh, product business also is distinctly strong. And if you are right, I think uh, maybe on Monday, we are expected to see some kind of positive announcement coming in from the company on variety of fronts. Uh, be it, I think, the new potential demerger for geo platform Reliance details, or for that matter, I think interesting news coming up uh, also on the front of Tesla, which you just mentioned. Such kind of announcement are distinctly possible. So let's wait and see, I think, from the announcement point of view as well. <clears throat> Devin Bhai, um, it's April and we are talking about Mumbai temperatures rising to 38-39 degrees, which means we are in for a tough summer. How can one really bet on this entire hot summer theme 2024? Buy conditioners, buy beverage companies, buy both. What's the best way? Yeah, I guess I think uh, the white good news good morning. The white goods companies particularly are likely to show the relatively stronger performance, be it the case of Alta or for that matter, Havels, uh, for that matter, Blue Star. Uh, I think these companies are showing distinctly high amount of growth as you also get confirmation from likes of VJ sales, Coino. I think these kind of retailers are also confirming, including I think if last digital, uh, if you hit the shop, uh, they probably confirm the amount of uptake that they are seeing in these areas, uh, in these products. So certainly, I think the business is con business condition is remaining extremely robust and strong. With the amount of money available in the hands of uh, individual consumer, I think the uh, spending is also on rise. Coming to the stocks and the price and the valuations, I believe that the momentum is continuing with the better numbers in this quarter, April, May, June, three months, I think are likely to be an extremely strong months for these companies. Most of it should have been priced by now, I think, into the stock price. And I see many of the companies' counters have actually, I think, uh, shown the valuation already on a fair value side. So maybe momentum continues, so the valuation could possibly stretch a little bit further, but that's the nature of the game. You have stronger quarter in form of, I think, the great summer out here. So you are likely to see the better number of, uh, better amount of uh, revenue and the profit numbers from these companies. 
Okay, fair enough. Meantime, let's also get in a take then uh, as to what the outlook is from you uh, within the entire QSR space, um, uh, Devain. Uh, given the fact that we are looking at a bit of a weak Q4 playing out this time around, there could be a delayed recovery. How are you looking at the listed players? Well, I guess I think uh, for a long period of time, we have always believed one thing that these companies have fantastic amount of business proposition. The moat remains absolutely strong. However, our markets have ran up much in advance and the valuation of the stocks in the listed space, they are not cheap. So unless market feels some meaningful correction, and when I say meaningful correction, unless I see headroom for 15 to 20 percent kind of an appreciation, probably I think buying in the momentum is not something which I'm very comfortable with. So I believe that I think most of these companies have a bigger picture to offer going forward as well. So corrections in the price is something which I would look out for before buying into this space. Devin, just curious to get, a, get in your take, uh, given that, uh, you know, we are looking at a pretty strong uh, GDP growth, the fact that um, we are seeing the elections upcoming, macros compared to the rest of the globe seem to be better placed. How are you looking at sectors like railways, defense, infrastructure, taking this forward? And in light of that, which are the stocks that appeal to you? Yeah, one. I guess I think most of the companies uh, within the respective sectors, particularly capital goods space, uh, engineering, uh, designing space, I guess I think all these companies are reasonably priced given the kind of a uh, expectation of growth. Railway in particular remains extremely strong proposition along with defense for sure. The government of the country is definitely releasing significantly large amount of orders for the companies. So be it likes of ABV, Siemens, uh, or for that matter, I think any of the EMS companies which are uh, B2B supplier to the railway segment, I guess I think they are the players who should be looked, uh, washed out for. Uh, the likes of ABB Siemens, they are always supporting it a premium. They are right now also putting it a premium. But those who are taking the bet for next uh, five years and above, they may probably, I think, buy in some amount of corrections in the market if the market is one. So that is where probably I think one could go for buying rational in this kind of a market where the valuations are already fairly priced or premium valuations in some cases. The EMS companies, they remain relatively, I think, a stronger bet, likes of BCX systems in particular, where we believe that I think the new product introductions that they are having could possibly have relatively a stronger amount of uh, action going forward from this business. Similar are the opportunities in different other companies as well. So in my viewpoint, uh, the segment remains extremely strong. Buying probably the challenge even the kind of valuation which I think most of these companies are quoting. But the market is expected to give some correction in, in between, which is what we believe is I think the right time to buy into. And major correction is ruled out. So 15-20% kind of headroom and the price expectation would be the right time to buy into these stocks. Devin, which is one stock you've been holding from last 10 years? You know, Kunal and me were just discussing this and I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm coming to, I want to establish and Vishal, you want to hear this data. Kunal and me have discussed this data like in the break. So, I'm going to request my producer to look at 10-year charts. Do we have 10-year charts? Let's look at 10-year charts of, and I'm putting random names here. BEL, that's a PSU company. The stock has gone in last 10 years by how much? And folks, you could hold your breath here. This is not a error. In last 10 years, BL has gone from 30 rupees to 250 rupees. And this is after the correction which has kicked in. I'm not comparing the peak. Adani Enterprises. Take a deep breath. Take a really deep breath. What do we have here? Kunal? 100x. This stock has actually gone 100x in last uh, 10 years. KEI. And this is like the real you know, bolt out of the blue. We don't talk about it. And these are not uh, rounding off errors. This is a genuine move the stock has seen. 11 rupees has become 4,000 rupees. Devin, bhai, ab agla bata do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Nikunj. Uh, well, I think the amount of opportunity that we are seeing in the uh, near term, maybe near term is about five years from me, uh, is, is the geofin. Basically, I feel that I think this particular company has a good amount of story to talk about. It's a core investment company. 
it's basically investing into NBFC business, it's investing to asset management business, it's investing to wealth management, brokerage business, uh, uh, and the insurance business coming up next. So in respect to businesses in which they are investing, they're creating significantly large amount of value proposition. If one looks at the potential and the possibility in each of the four verticals in which they are operating, I would like to believe that I think these verticals are going to unfold and unfold big time. Their larger amount of thrust is going to be on two counts. On one side, they have the balance sheet, which is absolute requirement in this kind of businesses. On the other side, they have got the customers, which is again, I think, a very significant kind of a mode because generally you don't get customers so easily. Being a core investment company, I think they get that particular advantage of uh, credit information about those customers into the books. So to, from that perspective, it's going to be a real disruptor. And the value proposition which is being built in this, I think, could be really, really big. So whenever it unfolds, I'm not expecting it happen in six months or nine months' time, but whenever it starts unfolding, probably I feel that I think it's going to be a huge value creator. I would not be surprised if a 300 rupee kind of a stock is basically going to uh, uh, quote it somewhere around 1500 in the next three to five years' time. So that is one area where probably I'd even extremely convinced about from the investment perspective. Devin Bhai, which is a good idea which you would recommend our viewers that they should go and buy today? Doesn't matter where Nifty is, doesn't matter where crude is, you think that money would be made in next two, three years in it and it could be a double digit return. And yes, I think I broadly discuss about GeoFin and I believe that I think if the market is giving some kind of correction, which I believe it will. So I think anything which is 5-10% lower than the current market price could be a good buy opportunity in GeoFin as of now. Meantime, um, let's also get in a take then uh, as to what the outlook is, Devin, from you when it comes to the entire auto space that you track quite closely. Remaining extremely bullish and convinced about, I think, the prospects going forward for autos. Uh, largely because of the fact that on one side, the commercial vehicle where we remain fully convinced about buying into this opportunity. Uh, the fact that, I think, infrastructure story, fact that the industrial activity getting unfolded and a scrappage policy is also into force. We believe that the commercial vehicle is probably into the sweet spot uh, at this point of time. And going forward in the next two, three to five years, I think this is one space where you are likely to see the sustained momentum continuing for the growth purpose uh, on a month on month as well, as month basis as well. Uh, on the other side, I think the two wheelers, particularly the way the shift is taking place into the electric two wheelers, I believe that I think the likes of Bajaj Auto could possibly be uh, showing relatively more amount of strength because of the range of vehicles that they are bringing up, uh, including in the LPG segment of uh, motorcycles. I believe that I think this one company should be watched out for. It has uh, got a lot of headrooms to talk about. Uh, the passenger vehicle segment business, Tata Motor remains, I think, relatively more convincing story comparatively. And if uh, Tesla kind of association results into some kind of a uh, venture together, it could be, I think, a really meaningful story to talk about as far as startup is concerned. So these are a few companies within the auto space where we believe that I think the opportunity could be, I think, good. But most importantly, some of the auto ancillary companies. I believe that I think while the OEMs could do their bit and they start uh, producing better performance, most of the ancillary companies which have geared up to supply the assembly to the OEMs, they are actually relatively better placed the likes of, you know, Minda or the Minda Corp in their respective space in which they are operating, along with the focus on high kit value for a customer. I believe that I think these companies could be really uh, good opportunities to consider for investment. If the correction in the price takes to be a meaningful buying opportunity. Um, thanks very much, Devain, for taking time out and joining in with your outlook on the markets. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.